the guy who blew the whistle, the helmsman. This is a whistle that comes off his battery. Would you like me to blow it? Can you hear it? All contract to support the Olympic training tables, then took on the Olympic job of baking for all of Los Angeles. Pretty soon, 300 trucks stand out for the city every day. The Helms coach would come about the same time every day with all the fresh baked goods you could possibly want, whether it was jelly donuts or cream puffs or chocolate chip cookies or Olympic bread, or bread, or shape and variety. And you would just put up a card in your window, a Helms card, that would state that you wanted bread or pastry or for him to stop. And he would blow his whistle, and um, then you would go out and purchase whatever pastries or whatever you wanted. You got a lot of service in those days. If you didn't have a car, it didn't make difference because people brought things to you. That was business. This particular coach owned by Hillcrest Motors is a 1948 Helms square coach. Mr. Helms, because garbage comes in trucks, so they are Helms coaches. And it's 11, over 500 coaches on the road any given day, delivering to more than three and a half million households. Most people don't realize, but I was the first white ever to win a national championship in diving, and the first uh, American-born Asian to win a gold medal for my country, the United States. I was there in London. Helms Bakery used to fly in Helms bread every day for our consumption. Remember, all the Europeans, the Asians said, that bread, it's like, it is so white. How can they make bread so white? So we ate like things. The French bought it. Helms Bakery. <laughs> In 1969, a loaf of Helms bread set up in the Apollo 11 space capsule to become the first moon. But a sad postscript. Five months later, they turned off the ovens because the earthbound little delivery coaches were just too expensive. It was a wonderful time, and Helms, I think, elicits a very warm, personal feeling about the essence of Los Angeles at the time. Even so, how much something costs is not a good measure of going to last. Landmark was very proud of its high prices and its high quality and its high service. Of course, we're talking about Bullock's Wilshire. A very elegant fight sales can come out to greet you, and you might see one or two things hanging on on a model. But you told the lady what you wanted and what you were looking for, and you sat on in front, and the sales lady went out to find what you wanted. She would go out and bring two or three things for your approval. 
could be sent out to show you how it looked. And so that's the way you bought your clothes. Phyllis Wilshire was the most gracious. Um, you didn't even park your own car. You drove your car in, and it was parked by a valet. And you got out to look on the ceiling and see a magnificent mural. And you would go in, and you would do all your shopping. And when you were done, you would go out, and your packages would be loaded in the car, and you would drive away. was magnificent and it is still magnificent it was built in 1929 it has a very unique history. it was the second store in the bullocks chain the man who conceived the store was pg the vice president of of, of bullocks Paris Exposition of 1925. And the style that grew out of that exposition was Art Deco. And he saw all these art designs, and he decided, that's what I want for the new store. So the exterior was this magnificent 10 stories, copper and terracotta in this Art Deco style. And the interior was unlike any department store in Los Angeles. who was anybody could buy anything, as everybody remembers. One day, my mother and I were having lunch. The world stood still. What's happening? Our eyes were directed to the entrance, and there stood Marlene Adietra. She was just at the height of her publicity, career, and good looks. She was in a double-breasted suit, buttoned, a white silk shirt, unbuttoned, a thought except hair. Remember these the days? Ladies did not go out with hat, without hat, without gloves, or proper clothes. And there she stood in all her glory in this entrance. She had on a pair of high satin opera slippers. No, no gloves, no goddess. Everybody just, the world just stopped. Unheard of. Women did not wear pants. Things like slacks were never seen. Everybody began to dress, and it was like a locus, you know. They were the chatter just didn't stop. I think that whole town was thrust into a state. Anyway, getting back to both. Ladies went to lunch there. The tea room was kind of blue blood American cuisine. You would have um, coconut cream pie or a bombay salad with crab and shrimp. And they said they had to use a certain vocabulary. They had and they had to say approve and not okay. Never said. Book Witcher opened one month before the stock market crashed in 1929 as old money began moving west from downtown along Wilshire Boulevard. And they shopped for more than 60 years. Bullock's Wilshire closed its doors in 1992. But the real reason it isn't here anymore is because the old stars all died. West. West with it. We'll meet at Gilmore Field when things that aren't here anymore continue. Well, we hope you're having as much fun as we are taking a magical walk down memory lane. Stephanie Edwards. And I'm Val Zavala. It is so great to be here and share this remarkable program with you. And of course, the remarkable Ralph story. Remember, it's viewers like you that make simple. You give us the power to turn great ideas into outstanding programs, just like things that aren't here anymore. 
You know, it's a joint venture between you and KCET that helps your children and your grandchildren become great citizens. All it takes is a call. The number on your screen, which is 1-866-523-8200, or you can go online at KCET.org, and we'll send you a great thank you gift. You remember seeing the big red cars rolling through the streets to pick up all those happy passengers? Did you ever stop by the Brown Derby for a Cobb salad? Well, come to ride with us back in time. Things aren't here anymore, and more things aren't here anymore. Hosted by the legendary Ralph Story, includes wonderful images and stories of L.A.'s early days, which can now be yours when you make a donation to KCET. Contribute $50, and KCET will say thank you with your choice. Either the DVD, Things That Aren't Here Anymore, a beautiful crafted video scrapbook bursting with photos, film clips, home movies, and many more personal experiences shared with Angelinos dating back to the 20s. More featuring stories from my TV personalities like Cleet Roberts and then plus Bush Gardens, Lion Country Safari, and Cubs Baseball. Increase your contribution to $90 and will send you both DVDs, Things That Aren't Here Anymore, and More Things That Aren't Here Anymore. These beautifully made DVDs take you back in time to a Los Angeles now. Remember, it's because of the generous support of viewers like you that KCT is able to bring wonderful and engaging shows like Things That Aren't Here Anymore and More Things That Aren't Here Anymore right into your living room. Thank you. It's a pretty special gift and you deserve them for investing in KCET. So just call us at one 8200 or go online at kcet.org and please make a contribution. They really are the most incredible programs and probably the best reason to get them is because of the way Ralph's story rides on this wonderful sentimental journey. Executive produced by Val, by the way. Thank you. Now, Ditto has brought us some vintage video of so let's take a look. If you have a nagging suspicion that there's something familiar about our latest civic crisis, you're right. Once again, we are told that Los Angeles desperately needs a really efficient rapid transit system. Once again, we are warned that the alternative is strangulation on our own traffic. Once again, experts from City Hall to City House are struggling. really don't have to. Last year, right here on this program, we presented a solution, and they started it. But unpaid and full of the again, a really efficient rapid transit. Now, how does this blueprint strike you? 1,200 miles of glistening trees, 800 electric cars, any place you can go, and for just a dime. How far ahead do we have to look? 1980, 1990, perhaps? No. 1926. That's right, 1926, for back then, we in Los Angeles had the greatest rapid transit system in the world. We had it, and then we threw it away. You know, it's not often that we have the chance to see ourselves as others see us, but I had that chance in the last...